So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to this video today. We're going to fi uh, continue to develop our tic tac toe game using JavaScript and HTML. Um, so, what we left last time, if we open this up in a browser, we just got the basic sort of interface of the game going. So, we can click on the tiles to like flip them and uh, alternate between the north and the cross tile like this to play a two player game, so to speak. Um, so today we are going to are we going to implement uh, AI to to this uh, to this game, and then in the next video we'll be implement the menu or sort of, sort of the interface, so we can change between the different game modes uh, as we so choose. So the algorithm we are going to use is um, more or less just taken directly from this article here. That is describing uh, AI player in uh, Java code and uh, the minimize minimax search algorithm so uh, to doing so so basically what what the minmax search algorithm is it is a recursive algorithm that sort of calculates the gain for all possible moves from any given uh, sort of game or playboard or any any given uh, game state so it calculates all the sort of like free cells all the free positions and calculates how possible uh, it is for it to win uh, if it moves to that cell or how possible it is for it to lose if it moves to that cell so that's sort of the algorithm in a nutshell here yeah so you can see here we search through all the uh, search through all the, uh, the sort of moves that are, are all all legal moves for the for the player current player here and then we have for, have this uh, sort of recursive algorithm here so we have the base case here, if the if it's game over or the level is uh, zero, the search level, then we return. Else we run this code here recursively, and here and here's the recursive step right here, um, where it should be. Yeah, sorry, here and uh, here is the recursive step, of course. Then it will return um, return the best score here, and as for our purposes, it will also be quite important to uh, return the move or the index for where we want to move uh, in order to like update the game state. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Um, so we can start by going down to the button of the script file, sort of right here, and we can define a new uh, function or class here that we will call AI player. Uh, so, call it, it said like this, and as a um, sort of uh, sorry the uh, uh, argument here for the for the constructor, it just take the data with the current game board, and then we just save that to this uh, data variable here that we can use inside of this function. Then we will need a seed and uh, the seed of the opponent, opponent, and uh, these are just the uh, uh, yeah. Let's say what kind, what sort of tile the the AI and the player, or, or the uh, computer and the, and the opponent player is. So we need a function to set the seed. So you say this dot set seed equal to a function like that, and then we need a function to get the seed. So we say this dot get seed like that. And then we can then we'll use we will use a move function like that, and then we have the, some private functions here. So we have the minmax function uh, like that, and that took uh, depth and uh, player as uh, as arguments there, as it has in the article as well. Well, I close that down, but whatever. And then we'll need some uh, evaluation function to like evaluate each of the different moves here. Yes, uh, so we need a function evaluate um, like that, and that will need a helper function that will call evaluate evaluate uh, line like that. And then lastly, we'll have a uh, Another public function here that we'll call pass one, and that will just calculate if uh, a particular move yield a win for for 
for a player or if the current game board uh, uh, is equal to a win. And that will need this private field here that we call winning pageants. And that will just be equal to this self invoking function here. So we will initialize it inside of here. And that will use inside of this has one function. And that, of course, take the player of which to check uh, against uh, what who has won. So let's start and implement those functions uh, in a bit random order, maybe, but we can start with the simple ones. So we can start with the set seed function. So that we just take this uh, seed parameter like that, and then we will say that the uh, seed is equal to this seed, and then we take the opponent seed is equal to uh, the seed if that's equals to the tile naught. Then we want it to be tile cross. Else wants to be tile naught, of course. So we can get um, an instance of each of the different seeds right there, and then we get seed. We want to just return the seed. That and then the move function, it will just return um, the minimax uh, of the depth search of let's say 2 and uh, the, the one we want to search against is the seed of course and we want to uh, return the second field there because this uh, minimax function we going to run an array list with, um, with the move or the index we want to move to and, and that's the first argument here, the best uh, score, or the best, uh, yeah, the, the current score for that particular move that we haven't implemented yet. So, starting to get, uh, get shape here, so, uh, just so we don't have any syntax error. So, this early in the development, let's just go up to the init function, let's just create our AI. And we can create that as a new AI player, like that. And then we can set the seed. Uh, we can say here, we can say it, um, player. We want set to the opposite of the player, of course. So we say if the player is the uh, uh, tile naught, as it is in this case, then we want to be cross. Else we want to be tile naught. So we have that done. Like that. And uh, just to make sure that we specify the global variable of AI right there. Um, and uh, we have that done. So let's just log out console log AI.getC. Just to see if it works here. Yeah, so that's logged out the image or the, uh, yeah, the image or the seed that we have. Current hand there. So that's good. So everything's working so far. Speaking of global variables, I think we had an error in the last video where I write here. So this should of course also be a variable here. This shouldn't uh, be populated in global scope, which it is so we, if we don't uh, specify the var keyword in front of this uh, variable right there. Anyway, moving on to this function here. Yeah, so the minimax algorithm it basically works as we uh, said before here that it looked through all the current moves um, all the valid moves so we'll just call that uh, next uh, moves something like this and we can set that equal to the get moves function and <laughs> that we forgot to implement here so let's just implement that uh, right here so we say function uh, oh uh, this was in the wrong function as well. Here, sorry. Bar next moves equals get moves. Or get valid moves maybe. You can call it like that. Get valid. And we can implement that right here so you say get valid moves. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, so it will um, sort of just uh, let me open this up again. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so it will look through all of the value moves and then it will run this code here. Yeah. So let's implement that. Let's see. Let's open this up again. 
So if we won't do that, we'll need uh, some uh, some fields here that we will keep track of. So we have the best field here, so the best score, or the current best score here. And then we say if the player, if that is the, if the maximizing player, so if it is the if, if it is the AI opponent, then we want it to be some small number to start there. So I'll just use minus uh, yeah a large number right there. I also want it to be a big number if it is the maximizing minimizing player, so to speak. So a small number if it is the maximizing player, and a big number if it is the minimizing player. And then we need to uh, keep track of the current score, and I will just leave space by declare that variable right there. And then we will need the best index uh, field right there, and we'll set that to negative one to the start. And we will just return that right there. So then we know if we can't move anywhere. That means the board is full, and that means, yeah. So and then it will turn negative one. So we know that. So we know if this function, minimax function, or this move function rather, return negative one, then we knew that know that the board is full. Anyway, so we say if the next moves uh, the length is uh, zero. So if the um, one of the players won, uh, something like that, then there are no valid moves left, or the depth is uh, zero. So if we have traversed uh, down the minimax search tree uh, down to the depth of zero, then we just take the best to the, then we do, we do we evaluate, um, evaluate uh, the score of the board, of the current uh, game state. Else, we want to do this sort of recursive algorithm here, so we say for var uh, i equals um, uh, the next dot uh, moves dot length, like that, and we can use this short time syntax for just looping through all of the next moves, and we can just call that m here, so we say next moves at i, like that, and that should give us our number, or what index we can move to. And then we call this, uh, uh, we set the data at that particular uh, cell equals to this player variable. Um, and for that to work, we'll need this set function. So let's just implement that. We can do it right over the flip. Let's say this the set function next, and it will work. Quite similar to the flip pair, just that it will just set the child equal to next like that. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of this step right here. So we say if the uh, where 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 are we? Uh, 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 yeah, we try to move for, for the current player, so to speak. So we reset and then we check what how that um, uh, influenced the game board. And then after we do that, we set it back to the blank uh, tile for now. Because if it is a valid move, then that means that, uh, that the tile is blank. Okay, so here we will do the, the different checks here. So we say if the player is the uh, if the is the AI seed like that, also it is the uh, sort of the the player seed and not the computer seed. So then we'll do two different algorithms here. So we set the current to the minimax uh, minimax of uh, the depth level minus one, and then the opponent seed, and we want to set it to the score field that we return right there. Then we say if the current is uh, greater than the best, then we want to set the best mon equal to the current. Uh, like that. And then we want to set the best index equal to the m to the move. Right there. And the same go for this one. But we do it in the other direction. So we say minimax depth minus one. And then we want to take a the seed here. And then we say if the current is less than the best, 
then we want the best equal to the current and the best index equal to n. So that's all of the minimax functionality of the function. So our L3 we want to implement now is this get value moves function, evaluate and evaluate lines, and then winning patterns and has one function, and then we should be done with the AI system. So we can start with the get value moves. That's simple enough. We can just create this uh, next move list here, nm for short. Then we say if um, as one uh, uh, seed or as one uh, player, or oh, sorry, opponent seed. So if the computer or the player has one, then we just want to return uh, an empty uh, array or empty list, uh, nm like that directly. Else we just want to loop through all the uh, indexes in the, the data variable or in the data array. So we say, I use this short and full loop again. Now we say if the data at the i position not has any data in it, uh, like that, then we want the mech to push uh, that index to the uh, to the sort of let's see here, let's miss write like this. Then we want to push that index to the uh, next moves array here. So if it is blank, that basically this function which returns if the tile is uh, blank or not. So we say if the tile isn't blank or is blank in this case, since we ne ne neg negotiate or neg yeah take negative evaluation of this expression. Um, so. And then we just push that index to the uh, to this array here. So that's we'll get all the value moves right there. Now we will just do the evaluate function, and that's a bit boring maybe. So we will calculate our score value here that we will return like that, and then we just take we'll evaluate every line uh, all of the eight different uh, possible uh, wins here. So if we uh, just uh, one more skip, let's see if I can find this right here. So we say, yeah, let's say here. So here, so here's is how the indexes of um, this is all of the indexes of all of the over the of your game board here. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So basically the one the ways you can win or the lines you will want to evaluate is you can if you this line here, this line here, and this line here. So this is all the different lines you can win. You can win on all of the horizontal lines, all of the um, vertical lines and also the two diagonal lines. So eight lines in total so that we want to evaluate. And if we look through this here, so the first line that should just be uh, at the index 0, 1, and 2, like that. Then we can just copy this down seven times. Let's actually you do it like this and say evaluate live. Like that. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I think. Yeah, anyway. And then the second line, that should be 3, 4, 5, of course. If you look here, 3, 5, 3, 4, 5. Then we have six, seven, and eight for the last horizontal line, and then we begin with all of the vertical lines. So that will be zero, three, and six. The first vertical line, zero, three, and six, and then one, four, and seven, and two, five, and eight. So let's say one, four, and seven, and two, five, and eight. Then lastly, do we have zero, four, and eight, and two, four, and six? So zero, four, and eight, and uh, two, four, and six. So that's all the lines we want to evaluate. Now let's just implement this function. So you say uh, index uh, one, index two, index and index three. There are the three different indexes we want to check. And then here again, we we'll calculate this. And we we'll, we'll declare this score function or score variable that we return. So we return res s. Let's have to score in this case. 
then we just want to check against all the lines. So we say data index. We can put it like this for now. And then we say if that equals to the opponent seed. Uh, like that. Else if the index is equals to the... Uh, sorry, I got this in the wrong direction here. The seed or the opponent seed, this is how it should be. And then we want to check against all three different seeds here. So you say right there, right there, and then we specify, let's say, 1, 1 here, 2, 2, and 3, and 3. Yeah. Uh, so we need to implement this equals function. So let's do it, do it, do that first, and let's just say it right here. So we say that's the equals function tile return tile equals to tile. Yeah. So that's equal function. Um. Yep. Yeah. So that done. And then basically right here, here comes the evaluation functionality of it. So basically what we want to do, it's all the way up here. So we say uh, we want to give it plus one if it is one in a line. Also we want to give it, um, uh, if it is the computer or the current player, um, and we want to give it a negative one if it is the opponent uh, player. So that's simple enough. So we say if it, if it is the player, then we want to set it to one. Also we want to set it to negative one. To the first, if we have one in a the line, then we want to check if we have two in a line. So we here we can say if s is equal to one, then that means that we have one in a line but previously here. So then we set s equals to 10, like that. Now we can say else if if s is equal to negative one, then that means that the previous tile in that line was occupied by uh, the opponent. Then we want to set the s to one, of course, since we only have want to have one step. Or then we just then we only have one in the line again. Then we have the else here. That means that the previous tile was empty. The tile we checked against up here. Then once again. Uh, oh, sorry. Then we, then we set it to one. Here we just want to return zero uh, if we if it not uh, yeah if it isn't really necessary for us. Yeah, here we have uh, it's the zero otherwise here. Yeah. So that's basically it. So and then. We could do the same for the opponent here. So, but of course we change this to uh, negative one here. This to negative ten. This to one, and this to negative one. Um, so we have that done. Then the last index is a bit com more complicated here. But basically check if the if the value is uh, over one, uh, zero, then we want to multiply. The s by 10 here because that means that the that the, uh, at the second child was was the was the seed or or that the pre that the first tile and the second tile was the was the seed so this will be uh, this here will be uh, evaluated as true if uh, if this or this was called right they this this or this so all those three cases then we have the else if s is uh, smaller than zero so that means that the two last uh, index x was occupied by the opponent uh, then we just want to return zero again then else we just set s to one because that means that we have one in a row again, and then we once again can just copy this down for this one, and then we just change direction of those two, and then we just take negative right there, and that is the evaluation function. 
So the last thing to implement is this has one function, then we should have a functioning AI system. So for this one, it is a bit complicated. We will use the uh, bit masks in order to speed up the process here. So we'll define all the speed um, the bit masks right here. So you say um, and basically what the bit mask is is that you use bitwise operations to like compare different strings of text. Uh, and if you don't know really what bitwise operation work or how they are, please leave a comment in the description. I'll try to explain it for you and I will leave uh, some kind of link to it in the description as well. But for and basically we want to check we have nine indexes in the in the data board, of course. And basically, uh, so we have where like then we can use nine bits for that. So we can use a number with uh, nine bits, or that probably like two bytes or something. I don't know how how the computer will allocate memory, but that doesn't really matter. The, that what's matter is that we take this bit string and uh, and evaluate it, uh, it it as a number, of course. Now we can use bit uh, masks for like controlling if uh, yeah if it, uh, that's tile is um, yeah to compare if uh, if it is if you have a one case that is anyway so we have the all of the horizontal uh, so all of the yeah horizontal lines here so you say like this then we have all the vertical lines so that should be like that, uh, like that, and lastly, like that. And then we have the, uh, the two diagonals as well. So we have uh, that one, and then we have uh, uh, that one. So that's all of the different uh, diagonals. And that's sort of, uh, this is the exact same thing as we have up there, or the same concept at least. Okay, so we have the winning patterns, and then we want to uh, just evaluate those as numbers and not as strings. So we can use the pass int method that is built into JavaScript. But for that, we use this uh, array here that we initialize to a, a specified length here. Then we just loop through all the different uh, win pa winning patterns here in the uh, in uh, like that, and then we take and we pass integer here with the two with the two arguments. So the first one is the string we want to pass as the integer, and just so we this integer here, for example, or this string of text, we don't want that to be evaluated as as 111, but we want it to be evaluated to seven or something like that. So for that, we can use which sort of base system we want to use here. So if we have use base 2, uh, then that means that we'll evaluate it as, um, uh, as a bit, as a string of bits, and not uh, as a base of 10. So the, the, if it should have put 10 here, then we will evaluate it by the base of 10, but, and we should get 1 or the other, but if we evaluate it by 2, then we will get 1, uh, 7 or something like that. I think that's a 1 plus 2 plus 4, so that's, uh, yeah, 6 plus 1, so 7, yeah. Anyway, and then we just want to return all here. So that should give us this sort of string. And just to see if it works, let's just log out all here, so you can see what that looks like. Uh, let's see, 3, 2, 8. Uh, 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 uh. That should of course not be if, that should of course be for. Yeah, so here we can see that, for example, this was evaluated as 2, 7, as I said, but let's say we have base of 10, then we should get 1, 11. Yeah, then we can see that we get like this, but that's not what we want. We want them as evalu evaluated to uh, bit strings, as bit strings, like that. So, since we're using this here, then we basically want to use uh, up here we have has one so we'll 
that that both two are like a uh, local and uh, and a public function. So let's say var has one there to give it to the local scope as well. Anyway, so the has fun function is quite boring, but <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's implement it. So we basically what we do, we declare this pattern variable here, that I will just call p for short, and then we loop through all of the different, uh, all of the sort of indexes in the data uh, array, so we say data dot length i minus minus is short and here to loop through all of the, those things again. And then we just check if the data at i is equals to the player that we specify as an argument to this function. Right there. And then we use a or, a bitwise or, to compare that to i bit shifted to one, sorry, bit shifted by i. So, <laughs> what this sort of mean here? So, an or operator in a bitwise context means, so let's say you have, so let's say, uh, all numbers in computer memory that are defined as bit strings like this, or strings bits. So for just convenience, let's say p is equals to zero, then that that is uh, allocated in memory by the, those three bits. They are probably like if, uh, 32 bytes or something like that in the real memory, but whatever. Just for convenience, let's say three bits, and let's say one. Uh, and let's say we have uh, just one here. So then we have uh, sorry, p, that is to three bits of zero, and then we say and equals or, or equals one, that is this in bits, so it's, it's two zeros and then a one. Then that will be evaluated as zero, zero, one, since we sort of like to compare all of the positions in the bits and if they are uh, one in one of the bits of that position, then the result will be one. So for example, let's say we have uh, this, uh, let's say p is equal to this, and then we, uh, or equals that to that bit, then that will be evaluated to that. The same goes if we have a one here, then this won't be two, because bits are only ones and zeros, so this will still be uh, one, oh, one, like that. And the bit shifting in the whole thing here, so let's say, once again, we have one, so let's say we have one represented by this bit string, and then we bit shift that by one, then that will be equals to zero, one, zero, because we shift this bit's position by one to the, oh, this is the wrong direction, sorry, uh, we bit shift that one to the left. And, let's, and the same thing if we have two here, then we will, it shift it so it's so the final string would look something like that. Uh, so basically, what this will do, it will loop through all the indexes in the data array and check if that's equals to the player that we are comparing against. And if it is, um, then it will sort of, um, yeah, save that position to this pattern here. And then we can compare this pattern using an AND operator, bitwise operator, to check if it is uh, one of the winning patterns. I hope that makes sense. If you want more uh, on this, please leave a comment and I'll try to explain it more in depth here. But anyway, so then basically what we do is we loop through all the winning patterns. So we say winning patterns dot length, i minus minus again, and then we say var vp, this time winning patterns at i, like that. And then we say if uh, the p and winning pattern is equals to winning pattern, then we want to return true, else we want to return false. So the and operator, that works a bit similar to the or here, or yeah, this, uh, they, they, they sort of resemble the, the logical and and or operators, but basically let's say you have p again, let's say p is equal to uh, this bit string, or this string of bits, and then we OR that with the string uh, that, then the result will be a zero, zero, 001, because it only uh, copies position that has both ones in it. 
So let's say, for example, if this should have been a zero right there, then this should be zero like that. So if, for example, let's say we have a bit pattern that looks like this, but a bit string was this, then the result should be this, and then those two things, they, this and this, isn't equal, so this should be evaluated as false. So this is how bit masks work. This is the actual bit masks in juice use here. So that should be it. That should be the final AI system right there. So to check if it works, we can go up here to the init method uh, or someplace. And here we can just log out. So we say console.log AI.move. And uh, not to forget, let's just specify the data as an augmented constructor. And if this works now, let's see in the, in the browser. Um, Undefined is not a function. Oh, this dot evaluate should it only be evaluate. So line two two four. Let's see here two 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 four. That should be like that. We don't really need to log out this message anymore. Let's see, well, it was evaluated as zero. That shouldn't really be the case. I uh, wonder where that can be. Uh, one moment, guys. Be right back. Yeah, so I basically found the error, and this here, of course, shouldn't return the best index, or the current, we should say, the, the, the score here, and not the sort of the move we want to move to, of course. So but just change those ones here to, to zeros, and it should work fine. So you can see that the best move, apparently, at the start, is to move to 4, which is in the middle of the, of the tiles. So that sort of makes sense for at least my intuition with uh, <laughs> tic-tac-toe. Anyway, so one final thing. Let's change the update method to work, work with uh, our, uh, sorry, with our AI, so the, so the AI actually work here. But for that, we'll need a couple of new variables, I think. So Let's go up here to the top, and I will declare two Boolean variables that we will have uh, calculated soon. So we say, we can say is player, and we can say AI moved. So those two uh, booleans. So we can declare the declare them right here. So we can say is player. That's just equal to the player. If, so if it is the north, so we always start with the north position, with the north, and then we can set the has uh, move. Okay, sorry, AI moved um, uh, to false here at the start, and let's just leave out that console.log message for now, and then we just update the mouse down event, and then. Right here, we can say uh, if it isn't the player, then we want to return. Then we just don't want to register the mouse clicks. Then right here, uh, we will get rid of this mess. Uh, this uh, that that changed the uh, uh, flip. That changed the uh, player between the different uh, between the north and cross. And then here we also set is player equal to false. Um, so we have that done, and then basically uh, everything else we'll do in the update method here. So first of all, we need to check if the flipping animation are done of done on all of the tiles. So here we can just set this active uh, anim variable. So oh sorry, uh, active anim. So active animations, and we set that to false at start here and then here each time we check against our uh, update our tile then we set the active animation here to the active animation or the data at i of active um, like that and the active procedure or method or function or whatever here we just return Uh, sorry, <laughs> this is active equals function that just return if the animation uh, variable here. So remember, this is 
how we update uh, sorry or how we check uh, uh, yeah the one the variable views for animation so if the animation is zero then that means that the or sorry if it is bigger than zero then that means that the animation is active so to see if this works now or if I got in the wrong direction let's just log out let's just do it like this you can see here you can say if not an active animation let's just log out test message for now so it's a test Come on, yeah, finally. So let's see. So now we click on the tab. Yeah, you can see that the test the stops. I can have everything like that. And I only can flip one tile then because then I changed the is player variable. So that works as well. So that's good. Okay, and then here we can just check if um, it isn't the player. Um, also, you can check if the AI has moved rather, um, like that, um, and it isn't the player. Like that, then we want to uh, move the AI. So you say AI dot move like that, and remember if it returns negative one, then that means that it is a draw. So we check if m is equal to negative 1, then we just want to return for now. You can log out, uh, draw to your console, maybe console log uh, draw like that. Else, we want to flip the tile at the m position to the ai.get uh, to the seed of the ai player like that. Then we want to set the is player equals to true like that. and we want to set the uh, AI moved to true right here. Um, uh, always like that. And then we else we set the AI moved false. And if we have done this correctly, we should now actually have a functioning game. So let's see. So if I flip this tile, then the AI flip that tile. Then I say for example right there. Yeah, and it blocks me and it seems to work here. And uh, now if I put it here, you can see that the draw message is written out. So that means it works. So far, so good. Um, basically one test we can do. Um, right here you can say... Mm, Uh, let's actually not use. Let's use. Uh, just use this right, like this. It comes log log. Uh, draw. Let's see what it looks like now. It should be written over and over again in the console. So let's see. Yeah, now we've all written out once. So that's what we want. Yeah, so that's it for this video, guys. So I will leave it. Uh, to this for now and in the next video we will do the, uh, the shake against uh, if uh, sorry we will shake or actually we can do it we can do it right here I think let's see so we can say if uh, mm -mm. actually we want to do that before <laughs> I don't really know the smart a smart way to implement this. Um, yeah, I will think about that in the next video, and I will leave it for this for now. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.